Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for kickoffs and kick ons. <laughs> Hello and welcome. You good? I'm all good, mate. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to Bits with Gids. This is a special one. Got the great Darcy Breen, um, 25 years old. He's from Sydney. Uh, eight super caps. Eight super caps. For the Waratahs, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Still, yep. I mean, it's good that you got to play for them. But, Absolutely. Uh, eight of those. And he's the leader of our mini team, the Seals. The great Seals. This is a handshake. That's it. Bang. Stole it straight from the Bra Boys, but... It's all good. Strength Did and honour. Yeah. Gee, I thought that was I th- yours. I think so. Yeah. Well, I I came, I I came into it. Yeah. So, but I think let's do it again. Yeah, let's. it's more of a seal thing, definitely. So, Das, your story, mate. Well, Talk me through it. Where did it all begin? School? Uh, have you always played rugby? So, and all that stuff? I started playing rugby when I was about ten years old. So initially it was because I was a bit of a man child as of growing up. I was always tall. My head was sort of the same size. My neck was almost sort of the same size yeah, when I was 10 great. years old. Really? When you were yeah, 10? Yeah. Do they want to see the neck? Yeah, I think All so. Right. I think so. There it is. Have a look see at that. Look at that. Yeah. Now it's that. Yeah, yeah. So that's Huge. what you're dealing with. But that's phenomenal. That was... Um, so I was always a bit of a man child growing up. I started with soccer, but then my friends were all playing rugby, so I switched over there. So 10 years old, I was in the two row, number eight, all the way up until I was about 16. That's when um, that's when I got to my height about now, 6'1". I yeah. stopped growing um, and loved going to the gym. So sort of the coaches came up to me and said, mate, if you want to play first 15, you're going to have to move into the front row. And I was like, great, say no more, let's do it. Um, and from there, played, um, went through at Scots, played Australian schoolboys and then moved into the under 20 system through the Waratah Academy. And then after school, I went to the greatest club in the world, Sydney University. Oh. So... so um, yeah, it's a really, it's a feel-good story, isn't it? A private school into another institution yeah, yeah, yeah. at Sydney Uni. But that's, um, you real know. Privilege real privilege story. Real privilege story. You know, that's, that's a feel-good story, isn't it? So, but, um, you know, I learned how to become a front rower at, at university and then more so at the Tars as well. Um, and then, yeah, so went through that 20 system. We got to the uh, final of the 2019 championship. A lot yeah. of Wallabies in the team at the moment. We're in that side and fell short to France by a point. Um, but then worked my way into uni first grade and then got my shot at the Tars in 2021 and did a season, did that season there. And then 2022, 2023, I was back at uni. We won the Shoot Shield in 22, which is a great, uh, which was a great result for us. And then um, found myself over here yep. and I got to meet you. So, oh, mate. I yes. got to meet you. So how, um, how did you get to the States? How did that all work? So uh, Dave Haig, the CEO, um, yep. also oh, he's Sydney Uni, also ex student. Yep. So he was uh, the general manager at Sydney University, um, and I sort of reached out to him, sort of with a vague sort of email, just expressing interest in the MLR. But in reality, I sort of really wanted to come over to Legion. Yeah. Um, and from there, we had a couple of chats and um, put pen to paper shortly after that. So yeah. it was just my it was my email skills, I reckon, that got me over the line. Yeah, would be. <laughs> uh, so that's where Sydney Uni comes in. Exactly, mate. It's all about correspondence. It's all about... It's good. So, and the, um, what's, the, what's the goal? So do, would you... You want to make a fist of it? Obviously, you want to play as well as you can each yeah. year. But is there... You have, You'll do your study, yeah. uh, get, finish your degree. That's obviously a priority as well. Yeah, so I've, I've actually on. got that done. So after Oh, you finished that? Yes, I've, so after 2021, I went back to uni sort of full-time. Yeah. Got my degree done, study economics. Degree econom- in? Economics. Yep. Right. Yep. So um, got that done. So that's out of the way now. And I've just basically now I want to see how good I can get as a footy player. Yeah. And, um, you know, MLR is a good comp, particularly for front rowers. You're up against a lot of older guys, more established guys. And, um, you know, San Diego is a great club with a great history. So... It was a pretty easy call for me, but um, you know, I still think you know, as a prop, you don't really hit your prime till you're about, you know, twenty nine into your thirties. Yeah. So um, you age like a fine wine. So it's um, you certainly do exactly right. So I'm um, I'm just keen to see how good I can get, and then if opportunities present themselves elsewhere, then great. But I'm here for the next this season and next season. Yep. So um, first priority is um, getting over the line with you boys this year. God, that'll be good. Oh. Oh. God, don't get me started. No, Got a bit of a way to go. Yeah, we'll keep. Yeah, let's just keep it focused. Yeah. Um, so scrumming. So you were a second row. I was a second row. So mate, I was having fun. I was second row number. I was jumping the lineouts. Can you believe that? Yeah. Can you believe oh, me of course. Out the I was pretty good in the air yeah. as well. But so you play basketball. And then, and then um, number eight as well. Great. I got to take the ball back of the scrum. You know, it was awesome. I mean, and then moved into the front row, which is um, what was looks, that like? The very first time oh. you go from second row. So second row. Yeah. 
when you're there in a scrum, what what are you going through? Like, is there pressure on your ears? Is that what? Yeah, like, it's a long time. Or? I used to wear headgear, so mum um, used to make me wear a headgear. And when what? I when I took it off, she was actually that would be yeah a hard they headgear. To, they, had to, they had to custom build yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so second, yeah, it's a different. It's a long time ago that I played in the row, But I remember when I first transitioned over, we went on a trip to New Zealand and we played against a school called King's College in, yep. um, in Auckland, I believe. Very good rugby school over there. And that was my first game at tight end prop and I got absolutely drilled. Did you? Um, and so it's a learning process. But, um, you know, it's one of those positions where it's good because the least is expected of you fitness wise. Yeah. It's just such a it's such a satisfying position you know um you know i always in what way you you always get asked i think front rows in general like do you love scrums and like i think you know a lot of people say oh i love scrums straight away and you know for me i love scrums because they as a tighter prop that's how i help my team yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. that's your way of. i don't like grabbing eight of my mates let's go pack some scrums on my day off it's like it's a very uncomfortable position to be in but, but you like adding to as as a tighter prop, um, you know you got a you know, opportunity to squeeze pens out of teams. It's a psychological thing. If your scrum's going forward, if your scrum's going back, you're having a tough day. You don't want to bar yeah, it. Well, that's what I so, want to touch on. So yeah. we'll start on the very odd occasion. It probably didn't happen much, but mm. you're getting dicked in the scrum. Yeah, happens to what, every prop. But what's that feeling like when you're in the game and you know, oh, this place's just going to absolutely. Well, you put on a brave face. And- yeah, well, you got to. You can't really buy into, especially if you get another prop going at you after the scrum. So yeah. it's very easy after you dominate someone, you can go and say, "Fuck your shit, fucking, yeah. I've got you all day." And uh, that doesn't really phase me. Not a lot phases me. I didn't no, know. No. So um, it's it's just a side. It's not just for the front rowers. It's for the whole forward pack. If your scrum's going back, um, it's just you're just getting man shamed essentially. It's seeing it's who can push harder, and if the other team can push harder than you, it, it yeah it takes a psychological toll. But um, look, it can. It's just such an important part of the game because the penalty aspect, it can flip the field, yep. you can get points, Change my you can reset, more. and you're setting a platform for guys like yourself to go yep. do your thing. Um, so it's really, um, you can be a liability if your scrum's going backwards, or you can be such a great asset if your scrum's going forwards and um, getting results. So it's one of those things that, you know, I love scrums because it's going to help my team win, and I love training for scrums because it's going to help to put my team in those positions. So, um, and that's, um, that's sort of where I'm at with... Um, with your, so I'm going to ask two things. So yep. One, I want to know, and I'm sure people out there have never been in the scrum would yep. like to know, so we'll touch on that. But mm-hmm. firstly, I want to talk about Alex Corbusero, who's our forwards coach, yes. here, scrum coach. Back in the day, he was the man in his position. Absolutely. He's a guru. How much have you learned he's, and improved since you've been here? He's been great, mate. He's been really, really good. So he was obviously loose at British and Irish Lions and, and England, and um, he just brings a whole other, another level of energy to scrum training. Like, he gets you up for it. He's involved. Sometimes I think he's going to jump in the scrum with us. Yeah. He's, he's, that, he's got that Oh, much. you'd fold him now. Oh, though, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just around off. Yeah. Be careful. But he's, um, no, he's been great. I've learned so much. And I think this year has sort of been my, where I felt most comfortable in the scrum. Um, and just some key things that I'm going to take forward. Um, so, no, he's been great. We, um, we, we really look closely at our scrum. And as I said before, it's just such an important part of the game. So when we get it right, um, it's just such a morale booster, I think. And this is the one I wanted to touch on. Mm-hmm. So this will be the last time we talk about it because scrums make me a little sleepy. Okay, yeah. But what I've always wondered, what, what does it feel like when you're in there and you're hitting? Like, is there, is there enormous amounts of pressure in your head? You wouldn't feel a thing in your neck, but, <laughs> you know, like where... And obviously, I know it burns your legs. Yeah. Because you've obviously got to push against them. But what is that feeling like? And, and when it collapses, like, what do you... Yeah. Like, what do you, well, you're, you're lying down flat, not knowing where the ball is. Like. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things when you look at it at face value, you get 900 kilograms, bang, going against each other as hard as they can. So I think since, because I've scrummed so much, you sort of forget what it feels like. Yeah. Um, but it's just an immense amount of pressure. As a tight edge, you're scrummaging against two people. Yeah. So I've got a loose head trying to fill me in and I've got the hooker, <laughs> I've got the hooker trying to fill me in as well. So you got to be strong, obviously both sides of your body. you got to lock your left shoulder down. But... It's just you're sort of holding your breath and you're waiting to find a, a lapse in pressure. Yeah. So if I feel my right shoulder is going down and I feel, oh, I've got this loose head a little bit, I'll try to chase that. And from that, you can... So it's potentially- basically whoever gives up first. Basically, yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just mano y mano, just let's go. Let's have a crack at each other. And if someone follows, but I think the big thing as well is your hit when, when the set, the crouch bind set, whoever wins that hit, I think probably nine times, eight times out of 10, they're going to win that scrum. So yeah. there's such a big focus, and that's why that engagement is so violent. It's been adjusted over the years. You know, you had crouch um, 
uh, crouch, touch, pause, engage. Um, but now they've brought, in the, they've brought in the crouch bind set in about 2015, which takes a little bit of heat out of the hip, but um, it's still incredibly violent. But, you know, after a scrum session, your neck, your back, everything's firing. Yeah. Um, but so, And recovery's not for you. Recovery, mate. Oh, yeah, we've this is a big thing. We've got a place where we go. People do hot, cold, saunas, uh, all different things to look after themselves. Das has two rules to get better. Yep. They are? Get horizontal. Horizontal, yep. yes. And, and then to your death shakes. Yes, so yes. talk us through your death well, shakes. Well, I mean... So this is something, apparently, normally, Das is ripped or somewhat lean. Yes. So you've struggled to keep your weight on. Yeah. So since you've come over here, you've mm. started this habit of having a death shake yep. every night. Mm -hmm. And how many calories are in that? That's 1,500. 1,500 so, uh, oh, calories. 1,500. But, like, I mean... I'll go back. For me, sort of, there's three sort of components of recovery. You got your nutrition, you got your hydration, and you got your sleep. Yeah. So in terms of getting horizontal, you know, my thought is, you know, you take care of your nutrition, your hydration, but when you're sleeping, what position are you in? Horizontal. You're 108 degrees, right? Yeah, very so cool. it's um, and so it's about how can I get in that position more often? Yeah. So and and so alone that's the, or um, do you change that position, you, mate? It's it's one of those things where you can get horizontal with friends. With family. Oh, um, with family? Well, no, I, yeah, with, when, when I'm back home, I'll do it with my family all just like... <laughs> yeah, mom, dad, come on, let's get horizontal. But it can, it, can, it can be a thing you just do on your own or it can be a thing where you get other people involved. Okay. Most of the time over here, it's been on my own. But um, look, you know, I, I'm not going to negate those other forms of recovery. If you, if you like the plunge... Yeah, yeah, but it's just not for you. Plunge away. If you feel better, I think recovery is very subjective. And I've been fortunate enough to get through the season pretty well. Touch wood. I uh, played in every game that mm. I've been available. So... Yeah. Um, it's been working for me. And then in terms of the death shake, so the death shake is a mass gainer shake with, uh, and I increase calories a bit by using chocolate milk. That's right, as yes. Liquid. Yes, so you're, you're pretty milk, much yeah. getting the maximum amount of calories you can. So I came over here at about 118 kilos and I'm like, right, I want to put on a few more. I want to get to $1.20. Yeah. So I started the death shake initiative. Um, so that's before bed every night. I'm just having this massive shake. Um, and it's sort of like a custard when you get it down. It's, it's you feel miserable afterwards. But do you? Yeah. Well, I mean, when I first started, I did. I was like, you're sitting on the edge of your bed and you're down the shake. And it was so usually midnight. <laughs> you set an alarm. The yeah, no, it's just right before bed. It's yeah. pretty late, but right before bed. And, and that's actually what you're supposed to do. Even if you want to put on muscle, you have a shake. Maybe not 1,500 calories, yeah. but you got to have something Maybe before you go to bed. 200. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I drink it and you're sitting on the bed and you sort of have to wait for it to settle yeah. um, before you can get to sleep. But Look, as I said, I lose weight quite easily. I started out as a second rower and number eight, so I was pretty lean and then um, got moved to the front row and they're like, right, you got to chuck on weight. I remember for my 20s year, they told me I was too light. So I went crazy and I put on about 10 kilos in, in six months. So, it yeah. <laughs> so, But it doesn't matter what type of weight you just whack it on. Well, up. I, mean, I mean... As in you don't feel... So when you're putting on that weight, you're still yeah. moving around. You seem I like can you still get around move. Yeah, right? you've seen. I, I can get around okay. Can. So um, okay. it's... um, I don't want to just become a just become a big fatty, but like I want to, I'm doing my gym stuff, I'm training, but for me, someone who loses weight quickly, um, I don't know if it's a high metabolism or what it is, you just got to get heaps in. Um, and so I probably could work, mate, the death shake's probably not the best thing, but like at the moment it's, it's convenient working. and it's working. So we're over in America as I'm well. I'm going to stick with that. And I want to put on more weight. Well, that, that leads well. me into this one. What's your guilty pleasure? Ooh. It doesn't even have to be food. And it often is. Oh yeah, it often it often is Uber Eats. I'm pulling the trigger on Uber Eats yeah. probably once or twice a week. Yeah. Um, what are we and that Uber can range eating? from Mackey D's, Donnie's over here. So uh, McDonald's. All right. Yeah. So it's not what as we good. We call it Donnie's. No, Donnie's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's um, it's not as good as it is back in um Australia, yeah. but it's still uh, serviceable for what I'm trying to achieve. Yes. Um, and then you got obviously your Mexican food over here. Oh yeah, which like is that. just you top tier. It's way clears anything for the for those from Sydney. They'll know Guzman, and it just clears Guzman. Gomez by a mile. So whether it's Mackey's or um, or, or tacos or whatever it may be, um, yeah, it's not the most economically viable yeah. option. It does cost a bit, but you know, I'm sort of sitting there horizontal. You got to treat yourself. Yeah, I, you? when I'm doing my horizontal recovery, I'm like, you know what would be great now? A bit of nutrition. Yeah, and I don't want to go up and make something because nah. that's going to impede on my horizontal time. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's a predicament. Uh, so, so who uh, gets the food when it arrives? I have to go out. Uh, so I should get someone annoying. to do that. I yes. might get Harris to start doing that for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd say that, and then I do love a um, I do love a rom com or a romantic movie. Actually, yeah. Wait. I was just about asking. Yeah. I've got a couple of little uh, Cosmo questions here mm. for the big Das. Mm. One was, you strike me as a crier in movies. Ooh, when was yes, the last movie um, that so you, you cried in? 
uh, there's, I think there's two that I can recall I cried. Uh, Million Dollar Baby. Oh, that made that's me feel horrible. horrible. I, I mean, that. it's just so what, you great. Were sobbing, great. Sobbing? And I wasn't sobbing, but tears were starting to formulate and, yeah. and, and come down. Then the next one is a very um, tough movie to watch is Schindler's List. Yes. Yes. Okay. So just, just sobbing there. Just horrible. Uh, it was yeah that last scene where he's got all everyone around him and they're all coming up and hugging him. Um, Some people may not have seen it, mate. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a great movie. One of the great movies. One of the best picture. But it is incredibly sad. Um, so, but I won't be crying, and you won't find me crying in romantic comedies or romantic movies. But I'm just saying there. Um, there's there's some good viewing out there, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, you're susceptible to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Fifteen percent better looking. Or fifty percent smarter. I mean, it's hard. You go to one fifteen, and you go to one fifty on the smarter. But fifteen percent better looking, or fifty percent smarter. Yeah. Look, you know, I'm gonna. So I, if I go fifteen percent better looking, I'm not losing any of my current intelligence. No, no, okay. no, no. You'll still stay at fifty. I might go fifteen percent better looking. Yeah. I might do that. So what's that Hold take on, you to? Fifteen. Do you think? Um, In your eyes, that's gonna get me up to about one fifteen percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought you were going to go humble there. I like it. Um, yeah, I mean, for fifty percent smarter. Wow, that's really going to open some doors for you too. Well, potentially, if yeah. you're stupid, it's yeah. only, you're only doubling a exactly. little. Exactly. So, but I think I can. I think I could. I think I still got a lot to learn. I think I'm a good learner. Yeah. So I can take care of that myself. But when the opportunity is there to get my looks a little better, I think yeah. I'll take that. My my girlfriend will be happy with that. If yeah. I actually. Option. Yes. He Shout did. Out. He did an interview recently. Yeah. And they asked him, "What do you miss about home?" And he just assumed automatically he went to food. Is that right? Well, yeah. Well, the producer prepped me for food beforehand. So I just sort of went back to my default, which is food. Yes. So I was saying I miss four and 20 pies. I miss chicken palmies. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and the missus then, and, and then my and... missus and my mum are on the blower saying, oh, why didn't you say you miss me? And I'm yeah. like, oh, well, obviously I miss you. But... Here's your opportunity. So yes. what do you miss about Australia? Oh, I miss my, my family and my girlfriend and my friends. They're the, they're Not the four and twenties? Four, I do miss the four and twenties. Yeah, and yeah. I do miss the chicken pie, don't get me wrong. Um, and Australian Maccas, it's pretty oh, good. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's been it's been a while and I'm looking forward to getting back and seeing them. Um, so yeah, friends, family and is. So um, nah, it'll be nice. Yeah, good on you. Mm. We got two more. I oh, know, it's so sad, but God. it does have to come to an end. So one thing that Drew asked me to check in with you mm-hmm. is we did, oh, actually, your beef eater. Oh. Has that arrived yet? Mate. Everyone's chasing up. I'm now. asking you. Yeah. What's doing? Yeah, what's drewing? Yeah. We'll have to chase her. <laughs> yeah. So the what's drewing for next week will yeah. have to be... Uh, so how many... Darcy's. I've won about 10 imaginary beef eaters Imaginary, but then you won a genuine one. Okay, so that, is that legit? Well, yeah, I thought it was. Okay, well, I'm going to have to give you my, my delivery details and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so, we'll pass so that So I've on. got my mates from my share house. They're asking me about their... You know, where's yeah. the beef? They look great because we've got a nice balcony. Yeah, they've cleared, right the, they're, cleared the balcony. They're ready to start grilling. Yeah. So um, if we can get that over line, that'd be great. Shout out to Beef. I really, yes. really appreciate the work there. Well, you shout them out here, but Drew noticed that we put up a... We collaborated with you. You collabed with us, and then you uncollabed. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking because I thought that when... I didn't realise that it would be your post. Yeah. Like, it would be, be a part of your post. And I was just... I don't know, I had a lot of a lot of bit of head noise. I'm like, oh, do I really want to post this? I'm like, I, obviously, I do. I love, yeah. I love the show and stuff. But you're getting want, a bit of heat off I your mates. I want publicity. I was just big, like, big. I was thinking, you know, maybe for the first time it's a little bit aggressive because I already posted the Instagram story yeah. and a couple other things. You post your stuff. So, you know, we might get to that point. Yeah, we're um, not there yet. We're not there yet. No. So I just thought maybe drip feed it for the meantime. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I pulled back on that. So I think it's just prof and... And um and the show that shared that. Yeah, so, so um, uh, there's your answer. But Drew. for and this, the... mate, I if, if we get a clip up, this is going global. Oh, like, I'm sorry, we won't have to push anything. We can just start our own show, I reckon. Well, well, we'll get. There. We'll talk about that off. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the very last one, unfortunately, is there a cartoon character when you're younger that you're sexually attracted to? Is there anyone oh, yeah, that I've really? Seen, I've seen you guys asking. It's this. a great question, I think. Um, I'm gonna have to say Mrs. Incredible. Oh yeah, you're gonna have Elastigirl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elastigirl. So um, that was. Probably... Is it because of her flexibility, or you look? You like uh, the sword? You like how everything about it? Yeah, f- yeah. Flex- I think yeah. I think the flexibility is a big one. I yeah. think so. And uh, you look a little <laughs> bit like Mister Incredible. I do. I actually get that quite a bit. Yeah. I actually, I used to drive this really small car. It was a VW up. I'm not sure if you remember the scene in Incredibles where he's yes, driving. Yeah, yeah, I know. And he's yeah, all like yeah. that. He's people, tall, yeah. people, someone took a photo of me in the car and then everyone just started sending the photo of Mr. Incredible in and yeah, let's get caught on pretty quick. But um, but yeah, probably, probably last to go. Yeah, right. I'm going to have to say Oh, that. there we go. Yeah. All right. Well, unfortunately, that's the end. Uh, bits with Git, but Das. There it is. What, what, what about the, the SEAL stuff? Do we have any stuff on the SEALs? Oh, well, he is the leader of our SEALs, which is our mini team. Yeah. So this is your platform to... 
Is there anything you want to cover? We could talk about... Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a good story about how I came into that leadership role. Resilience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, look, the there's four mini teams at the Legion, um, SEALs being one of them. And originally, I actually wasn't the captain. It was no. One of the, one of the youngest guys in our group. He was still waiting on his visa. Yeah, yeah. So, wouldn't um, that have been a disaster? Oh, I guess sorry, it would have been different. Oh. Have been. But, um, so, follow him to we... The um, well. So, yeah, one of my first interactions with Gitz, I don't know if you remember that, um, remember we did the navigation thing, yes. like running side. Cycling, and I was having a tough day. I came off the bike. I was blowing. Oh, I was, right. I was yeah, making. I was making bike. all sorts of noises. And I remember yeah. Gitz came over. and He's like, "Mate, we. I, I can't do what you do. You scrum. You maul. You do all the stuff. Then you expect to get back up and go again." And I'm thinking, you know, this bloke's making sense. Yeah, you know, this guy's smarter than he looks. Hop on the bike. Uh, and and yeah. I got got back on the bike. And then we went on a preseason camp to a marine base, Twenty Nine Palms. And that's where I was um, promoted to team captain by yours truly. Well. It, the, the thing was, they gave me the map, and as everyone knows, I'm not very good with geography or mm. getting anywhere. So I said, Das, go in the front, yep. got the leg room, and it'll all be sweet. Mm. Darcy gets us lost. Yeah. So <laughs> I was one, was one wrong turn. I, I did pretty but, well. But you only, it could be one or two wrong turns. Yeah. You got us yeah. lost. Yeah. Then 29 Palms, we did this course where you go around and you've got to carry army material. There was one part of the crab walks where you're walking just on your hands and heels like that. And our team manager, who's a... He, like he's ex-special forces, ex -special forces yeah. proper gun, lives for this stuff. Darcy's there and he's, he's going, oh, I can't go, Bob. He <laughs> said, I don't want to hear camp. You can. <laughs> no, no, really, I can't. And then when I saw the how defeated you were, I was like, that's our leader. Yeah. Yeah. And now look at you. Well, it's just one of those things. I think you hate when you're in the hurt locker and people are saying, come on, come on. Like, I know I'm doing everything I can. Yeah. And it's just sort of you were like, trying. And it's sort of like just beta. I just want to be in my own head and, yeah. and live with my head noise at that point. But, um, mate, it's been a massive honour. We've got a lot of good personalities in the series. Is there anyone you'd get rid of, you reckon? No. I no one? I can't. I can't do that. I think, what you know, a leader. I think um, a you know, as, like as, as a leader, you, there's times to be firm. There's times to bring it back. But yeah. I think everyone's grown and matured. We've got a lot of... Guys like yourself with a lot of experience, but mm. I think, you know, one of the Legion values, uh, the N on the Legion values, you know what that is? Mm. You don't know it, do you? No, I do not, you but know. I just don't want to say Mate, it. it's on the wall in the gym. I know. Oh, I stare at it every time. L E G I O N. Yeah, anyway, yeah. L is leaders lead, which is, I think, what I do very Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. And then the N is never above, never below, always beside. In other words, we're all equal. Yeah. Um, and I think you've got guys here with, like, Gitz with 100 World of Beach caps, he's one of the top 14. You've got guys like Marcel and Mikey, but... At the end of the day, that stuff doesn't You're matter. You're better than everyone. That, that, yeah, exactly. And everyone's equal, but I'm more equal. Yes. As because I'm the leader. But yeah. that is other stuff. While individual accolades are great at the seals, you know, it's we've got that feeling of togetherness, and everyone buys and it helps each other. Hand up, not out is another big. Yeah, thing. he loves yeah, that. Hand yeah. up, not yeah, out. It's not so. a, it's not a hand up. What can I do to help my team? Yeah. Um. So look, it's um, it's been a great journey where we're seeing. In a pretty good, oh, not the best spot, third place at the moment on the tally. We're gonna have to cut that out. Yeah. We're, we're, we're leading. Okay, yes. So we're sitting yeah, in a yeah, good yeah. spot. Mate, we're sitting in a great spot. We're, we're leading at the moment. Yeah. But like, whatever happens, I think I think we've just, we've learned so much from each other and everyone's learned a lot from myself yes. as well. So That's it's, the more important yeah. part. Yeah. And you, you, you win or you learn. Yes. So whatever happens. Um, and had, we're uh, doing both at the moment. Exactly. So I've had a, I've had an absolute blast and um, yeah, it's really, um, yeah, it's really helped me, my confidence and my uh, leadership skills going forward, I think. So Absolutely. It's, been a, it's been a massive honor. And there we have it, Bits with Gitz, the great Darcy Brain. Let's do it, let's do this one. There it is, strength and honor, baby. Cut. Lovely. Very good. <laughs> oh, wow. That is the best video on YouTube. You know what you need to do now? You need to like and subscribe down there, or if you want extra content, might be down there, you need to go up here or up here and get more of that gear. Thanks for supporting Kickoffs and Kickons, and we will see you very soon.